Russian literature refers to the literature of Russia and its émigrés and to the Russian language literature of several independent nations once a part of what was historically Rus, the Russian Empire or the Soviet Union. The roots of Russian literature can be traced to the Middle Ages, when epics and chronicles in Old Russian were composed. By the Age of Enlightenment, literature had grown in importance, and from the early 1830s, Russian literature underwent an astounding golden age in poetry, prose and drama. Romanticism permitted a flowering of poetic talent, Vasily Zhukovsky and later his protégé Alexander Pushkin came to the fore. Prose was flourishing as well. The first great Russian novelist was Nikolai Gogol. Then came Ivan Turgenev, who mastered both short stories and novels. Leo Tolstoy and Fyodor Dostoevsky soon became internationally renowned. In the second half of the century Anton Chekhov excelled in short stories and became a leading dramatist. The beginning of the 20th century ranks as the Silver Age of Russian poetry. The poets most often associated with the Silver Age are Konstantin Balmont, Valery Bryasov, Alexander Bloch, Anna Akhmatova, Nikolai Gumilyov, Osip Mandelstam, Sergei Yesenin, Vladimir Mayakovsky, Marina Sveteva and Boris Pasternak. This era produced some first-rate novelists and short story writers, such as Alexander Kuprin, Nobel Prize winner Ivan Bunin, Leonid Andreev, Fyodor Soligub, Alexei Remazov, Yevgeny Zamyatin, Dmitry Mareshkovsky and Andrei Belay. After the revolution of 1917, Russian literature split into Soviet and white émigré parts. While the Soviet Union assured universal literacy and a highly developed book printing industry, it also enforced ideological censorship. In the 1930s socialist realism became the predominant trend in Russia. Its leading figure was Maxim Gorky, who laid the foundations of this style. Nikolai Ostrovsky's novel How the Steel Was Tempered has been among the most successful works of Russian literature. Alexander Fedeyev achieved success in Russia. Various émigré writers, such as poets Vladislav Kodasevich, Georgi Ivanov and Vyacheslav Ivanov, novelists such as Mark Aldonov, Gato Gazdanov and Vladimir Nabokov, and short story Nobel Prize winning writer Ivan Bunin, continued to write in exile. Some writers dared to oppose Soviet ideology, like Nobel Prize winning novelist Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who wrote about life in the Gulag camps. The Khrushchev thaw brought some fresh wind to literature and poetry became a mass cultural phenomenon. This thaw did not last long. In the 1970s, some of the most prominent authors were banned from publishing and prosecuted for their anti Soviet sentiments. The end of the 20th century was a difficult period for Russian literature, with few distinct voices. Among the most discussed authors of this period were Viktor Pilevin, who gained popularity with short stories and novels, novelist and playwright Vladimir Sorokin, and the poet Dmitry Prigov. In the 21st century, a new generation of Russian authors appeared, differing greatly from the postmodernist Russian prose of the late 20th century, which lead critics to speak about new realism. Russian authors have significantly contributed to numerous literary genres. Russia has five Nobel Prize in Literature laureates. As of 2011, Russia was the fourth largest book producer in the world in terms of published titles. A popular folk saying claims Russians are the world's most reading nation. Topic. Early history Old Russian literature consists of several masterpieces written in the Old Russian language i.e. the language of Rus, not to be confused with the contemporaneous Church Slavonic nor with modern Russian. The main type of Old Russian historical literature were chronicles, most of them anonymous. Anonymous works also include the tale of Igor's campaign and praying of Daniel the Immured. Hagiographies Russian, Zetia Swati Jitia Sivetik, Lives of the Saints formed a popular genre of the Old Russian literature. Life of Alexander Nevsky offers a well-known example. Other Russian literary monuments include Zadin's China, Physiologist, Synopsis and A Journey Beyond the Three Seas. Bylinas, oral folk epics, fused Christian and pagan traditions. Medieval Russian literature had an overwhelmingly religious character and used an adapted form of the Church Slavonic language with many South Slavic elements. The first work in colloquial Russian, the autobiography of the archpriest Avicum, emerged only in the mid-17th century. 18th century 
After taking the throne at the end of the 17th century, Peter the Great's influence on the Russian culture would extend far into the 18th century. Peter's reign during the beginning of the 18th century initiated a series of modernizing changes in Russian literature. The reforms he implemented encouraged Russian artists and scientists to make innovations in their crafts and fields with the intention of creating an economy and culture comparable. Peter's example set a precedent for the remainder of the 18th century as Russian writers began to form clear ideas about the proper use and progression of the Russian language. Through their debates regarding versification of the Russian language and tone of Russian literature, the writers in the first half of the 18th century were able to lay foundation for the more poignant, topical work of the late 18th century. Satirist Antioch Dmitrievich Kantomir, 1708–1744, was one of the earliest Russian writers not only to praise the ideals of Peter I's reforms but the ideals of the growing Enlightenment movement in Europe. Kantomir's works regularly expressed his admiration for Peter, most notably in his epic dedicated to the emperor entitled Petrida. More often, however, Kantomir indirectly praised Peter's influence through his satiric criticism of Russia's superficiality and obscurantism, which he saw as manifestations of the backwardness Peter attempted to correct through his reforms. Kantomir honored this tradition of reform not only through his support for Peter, but by initiating a decade-long debate on the proper syllabic versification using the Russian language. Vasily Kirillovich Tretiakovsky, a poet, playwright, essayist, translator and contemporary to Antioch Kantomir, also found himself deeply entrenched in Enlightenment conventions in his work with the Russian Academy of Sciences and his groundbreaking translations of French and classical works to the Russian language. A turning point in the course of Russian literature, his translation of Paul Talmont's work Voyage to the Isle of Love, was the first to use the Russian vernacular as opposed the formal and outdated Church Slavonic. This introduction set a precedent for secular works to be composed in the vernacular, while sacred texts would remain in Church Slavonic. However, his work was often incredibly theoretical and scholarly, focused on promoting the versification of the language with which he spoke. While Tretiakovsky's approach to writing is often described as highly erudite, the young writer and scholarly rival to Tretiakovsky, Alexander Petrovich Sumorokov, 1717–1777, was dedicated to the styles of French classicism. Sumorokov's interest in the form of French literature mirrored his devotion to the westernizing spirit of Peter the Great's age. Although he often disagreed with Tretiakovsky, Sumorokov also advocated the use of simple, natural language in order to diversify the audience and make more efficient use of the Russian language. Like his colleagues and counterparts, Sumorokov extolled the legacy of Peter I, writing in his manifesto epistle on poetry, the great Peter hurls his thunder from the Baltic shores, the Russian sword glitters in all corners of the universe. Peter the Great's policies of westernization and displays of military prowess naturally attracted Sumorokov and his contemporaries. Mikhail Vasilyevich Lomonosov, in particular, expressed his gratitude for and dedication to Peter's legacy in his unfinished Peter the Great. Lomonosov's works often focused on themes of the awe inspiring, grandeur nature, and was therefore drawn to Peter because of the magnitude of his military, architectural, and cultural feats. In contrast to Sumerikov's devotion to simplicity, Lomonosov favored a belief in a hierarchy of literary styles divided into high, middle and low. This style facilitated Lomonosov's grandiose, high-minded writing and use of both vernacular and church Slavonic, the influence of Peter I and debates over the function and form of literature as it related to the Russian language in the first half of the 18th century set a stylistic precedent for the writers during the reign of Catherine the Great in the second half of the century. However, the themes and scopes of the works these writers produced were often more poignant, political and controversial. Alexander Nikolaevich Radishev, for example, shocked the Russian public with his depictions of the socio-economic condition of the serfs. Empress Catherine II condemned this portrayal, forcing Radishev into exile in Siberia. Others, however, picked topics less offensive to the autocrat. Nikolai Karamzin, 1766–1826, for example, is known for his advocacy of Russian writers adopting traits in the poetry and prose like a heightened sense of emotion and physical vanity, considered to be feminine at the time as well as supporting the cause of female Russian writers. Karamzin's call for male writers to write with femininity was not in accordance with the Enlightenment ideals of reason and theory, considered masculine attributes. 
His works were thus not universally well received, however, they did reflect in some areas of society a growing respect for, or at least ambivalence toward, a female ruler in Catherine the Great. This concept heralded an era of regarding female characteristics in writing as an abstract concept linked with attributes of frivolity, vanity and pathos. Some writers, on the other hand, were more direct in their praise for Catherine II. Gavrila Romanovich Dershaven, famous for his odes, often dedicated his poems to Empress Catherine II. In contrast to most of his contemporaries, Dershaven was highly devoted to his state, he served in the military, before rising to various roles in Catherine II's government, including secretary to the Empress and Minister of Justice. Unlike those who took after the grand style of Mikhail Lomonosov and Alexander Sumarokov, Dershaven was concerned with the minute details of his subjects. Denis Fonvizin, an author primarily of comedy, approached the subject of the Russian nobility with an angle of critique. Fonvizin felt the nobility should be held to the standards they were under the reign of Peter the Great, during which the quality of devotion to the state was rewarded. His works criticized the current system for rewarding the nobility without holding them responsible for the duties they once performed. Using satire and comedy, Fonvizin supported a system of nobility in which the elite were rewarded based upon personal merit rather than the hierarchical favoritism that was rampant during Catherine the Great's reign. Topic. Golden Age The 19th century is traditionally referred to as the «golden era» of Russian literature. Romanticism permitted a flowering of especially poetic talent, the names of Vasily Zhukovsky and later that of his protégé Alexander Pushkin came to the fore. Pushkin is credited with both crystallizing the literary Russian language and introducing a new level of artistry to Russian literature. His best-known work is a novel in verse, Eugene Onegin. An entire new generation of poets including Mikhail Lermontov, Yevgeny Baratinsky, Konstantin Batushkov, Nikolai Nekrasov, Alexei Konstantinovich Tolstoy, Fyodor Tyuchev and Afanasy Fet followed in Pushkin's steps. Prose was flourishing as well. The first great Russian novelist was Nikolai Gogol. Then came Ivan Turgenev, Mikhail Saltikov Shedrin, and Nikolai Leskov, all mastering both short stories and novels, and novelist Ivan Goncharov. Leo Tolstoy and Fyodor Dostoevsky soon became internationally renowned to the point that many scholars such as F. R. Levis have described one or the other as the greatest novelist ever. In the second half of the century Anton Chekhov excelled in writing short stories and became perhaps the leading dramatist internationally of his period. Other important 19th-century developments included the fabulist Ivan Krylov, non-fiction writers such as Vissarion Belinsky and Alexander Herzen, playwrights such as Alexander Griboyadov, Alexander Ostrovsky and the satirist Kozma Prutkov a collective pen name. <laughs> Silver Age The beginning of the 20th century ranks as the Silver Age of Russian poetry. Well-known poets of the period include, Alexander Bloch, Sergei Yesenin, Valery Bryasov, Konstantin Balmont, Mikhail Kuzmin, Igor Severianin, Sasha Chorna, Nikolai Gumilyov, Maximilian Voloshin, Inokenty Anensky, Zenaida Gippius. The poets most often associated with the Silver Age are Anna Akhmatova, Marina Svedeva, Osip Mandelstam and Boris Pasternak. While the Silver Age is considered to be the development of the 19th century Russian literature tradition, some avant garde poets tried to overturn it Velimir Klebnikov, David Berlich, Alexei Krutchenik, and Vladimir Mayakovsky. Though the Silver Age is famous mostly for its poetry, it produced some first rate novelists and short story writers, such as Alexander Kuprin, Nobel Prize winner Ivan Bunin, Leonid Andreev, Fedor Soligub, Alexei Remazov, Yevgeny Zamyatin, Dmitry Mareshkovsky, and Andrei Belai, though most of them wrote poetry as well as prose. 20th century With the victory of Russia's revolution, Mayakovsky worked on interpreting the facts of the new reality. His works, such as Ode to the Revolution and Left March, both 1918, brought innovations to poetry. In Left March, Mayakovsky calls for a struggle against the enemies of the Russian Revolution. The poem, 150 Million, discusses the leading played by the masses in the revolution. In the poem, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, 
1924, Mayakovsky looks at the life and work at the leader of Russia's revolution and depicts them against a broad historical background. In the poem, It's Good, Mayakovsky writes about socialist society being the springtime of humanity. Mayakovsky was instrumental in producing a new type of poetry in which politics played a major part. In the 1930s, socialist realism became the predominant trend in Russia. Its leading figure was Maxim Gorky, who laid the foundations of this style with his works The Mother and his play The Enemies both 1906. His autobiographical trilogy describes his journey from the poor of society to the development of his political consciousness. His novel The Artemanov Business 1925 and his play Igor Bulyshov depict the decay and inevitable downfall of Russia's ruling classes. Gorky defined socialist realism as the realism of people who are rebuilding the world, and points out that it looks at the past, from the heights of the future's goals. Gorky considered the main task of writers to help in the development of the new man in socialist society. Gorky's version of a heroic revolutionary is Pavel Vlasov from the novel The Mother, who displays selflessness and compassion for the working poor, as well as discipline and dedication. Gorky's works were significant for the development of literature in Russia and became influential in many parts of the world. Nikolai Ostrovsky's novel How the Steel Was Tempered has been among the most successful works of Russian literature, with tens of millions of copies printed in many languages around the world. In China, various versions of the book have sold more than 10 million copies. In Russia, more than 35 million copies of the book are in circulation. The book is a fictionalized autobiography of Ostrovsky's life, who had a difficult working-class childhood and became a Komsomol member in July 1919 and went to the front as a volunteer. The novel's protagonist, Pavel Korchagin, represented the young hero of Russian literature. He is dedicated to his political causes, which help him to overcome his tragedies. The novel has served as an inspiration to use around the world and played a mobilizing role in Russia's Great Patriotic War. Alexander Fedeyev achieved noteworthy success in Russia, with tens of millions of copies of his books in circulation in Russia and around the world. Many of Fedeyev's works have been staged and filmed and translated into many languages in Russia and around the world. Fedeyev served as a secretary of the Soviet Writers' Union and was the general secretary of the Union's administrative board from 1946 to 1954. He was awarded two orders of Lenin and various medals. His novel The Route deals with the partisan struggle in Russia's Far East during the Russian Revolution and Civil War. Fedeyev described the theme of this novel as one of a revolution significantly transforming the masses. The novel's protagonist Levinson is a Bolshevik revolutionary who has a high level of political consciousness. The novel The Young Guard, which received the state prize of the USSR in 1946, focuses on an underground Komsomol group in Krasnodon, Ukraine and their struggle against the fascist occupation. The first years of the Soviet regime were marked by the proliferation of avant-garde literature groups. One of the most important was the Oberu movement that included the most famous Russian absurdist Daniil Karms, Konstantin Vaginov, Alexander Vividensky and Nikolai Zabolotsky. Other famous authors experimenting with language were novelists Yuri Olisha and Andrei Platonov and short story writers Isaac Babel and Mikhail Zoshchenko. The OPOJAZ group of literary critics, also known as Russian formalism, was created in close connection with Russian futurism. Two of its members also produced influential literary works, namely Viktor Sklavsky, whose numerous books e.g., Zoo, or Letters Not About Love, 1923 defy genre in that they present a novel mix of narration, autobiography, and aesthetic as well as social commentary, and Yuri Tynyanov, who used his knowledge of Russia's literary history to produce a set of historical novels mainly set in the Pushkin era e.g., Young Pushkin, a novel. Writers like those of the Serapian Brothers group, who insisted on the right of an author to write independently of political ideology, were forced by authorities to reject their views and accept socialist realist principles. Some 1930s writers, such as Mikhail Bulgakov, author of The Master and Margarita, and Nobel Prize-winning Boris Pasternak with his novel Dr. Zhivago continued the classical tradition of Russian literature with little or no hope of being published. Their major works would not be published until the Khrushchev thaw, and Pasternak was forced to refuse his Nobel Prize. 
Meanwhile, émigré writers, such as poets Vladislav Kodasevich, Georgi Ivanov and Vyacheslav Ivanov, novelists such as Mark Aldonov, Gato Gazdanov and Vladimir Nabokov, and short story Nobel Prize winning writer Ivan Bunin, continued to write in exile. The Khrushchev thaw brought some fresh wind to literature. Poetry became a mass cultural phenomenon. Bela Akhmatilina, Robert Rushdestvensky, Andrei Voznesensky, and Yevgeny Yevtushenko read their poems in stadiums and attracted huge crowds. Some writers dared to oppose Soviet ideology, like short story writer Varlam Shalamov and Nobel Prize winning novelist Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who wrote about life in the Gulag camps, or Vasily Grossman, with his description of World War II events countering the Soviet official historiography. They were dubbed dissidents, and could not publish their major works until the 1960s. But the thaw did not last long. In the 1970s, some of the most prominent authors were not only banned from publishing but were also prosecuted for their anti-Soviet sentiments, or parasitism. Solzhenitsyn was expelled from the country. Others, such as Nobel Prize-winning poet Joseph Brodsky, novelists Vasily Oksonov, Eduard Limonov, Sasha Sokolov and Vladimir Voinovich, and short story writer Sergei Dovlatov, had to emigrate to the West, while Oleg Grigoryev and Venedict Yerofeyev emigrated to alcoholism. Their books were not published officially until Perestroika, although fans continued to reprint them manually in a manner called Samizdat, self-publishing. Popular genres Children's literature in Soviet Union was considered a major genre, because of its educational role. A large share of early period children's books were poems, Korny Chukovsky, Samuel Marshak, Agnia Bardo were among the most read. Adult poets, such as Mayakovsky and Sergei Mikolkov, contributed to the genre as well. Some of the early Soviet children's prose was loose adaptations of foreign fairy tales unknown in contemporary Russia. Alexei N. Tolstoy wrote Buratino, a light-hearted and shortened adaptation of Carlo Collati's Pinocchio. Alexander Volkov introduced fantasy fiction to Soviet children with his loose translation of L. Frank Baum's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, published as The Wizard of the Emerald City, and then wrote a series of five sequels, unrelated to Baum. Other notable authors include Nikolai Nosov, Lazar Lagan, Vitaly Bianchi and Vladimir Sutiv. While fairy tales were relatively free from ideological oppression, the realistic children's prose of the Stalin era was highly ideological and pursued the goal to raise children as patriots and communists. A notable example is Arkady Gaidar, himself a Red Army commander colonel in Russian Civil War. His stories and plays about Timur describe a team of young pioneer volunteers who help the elderly and resist hooligans. There was a genre of hero pioneer story, that bore some similarities with Christian genre of hagiography. In Khrushchev and Brezhnev times, however, the pressure lightened. Mid- and late Soviet children's books by Eduard Uspensky, Yuri Entin, Viktor Dragonsky bear no signs of propaganda. In the 1970s many of these books, as well as stories by foreign children's writers, were adapted into animation. Soviet science fiction, inspired by scientistic revolution, industrialization, and the country's space pioneering, was flourishing, albeit in the limits allowed by censors. Early science fiction authors, such as Alexander Belyayev, Grigory Adamov, Vladimir Obrashov, Alexei Nikolaevich Tolstoy, stuck to hard science fiction and regarded H. G. Wells and Jules Verne as examples to follow. Two notable exclusions from this trend were Yevgeny Zamyatin, author of dystopian novel We, and Mikhail Bulgakov, who, while using science fiction instrumentary in Heart of a Dog, The Fatal Eggs and Ivan Vasilyevich, was interested in social satire rather than scientific progress. The two have had problems with publishing their books in Soviet Union. Since the thaw in the 1950s Soviet science fiction began to form its own style. Philosophy, ethics, utopian and dystopian ideas became its core, and social science fiction was the most popular subgenre. Although the view of Earth's future as that of utopian communist society was the only welcome, the liberties of genre still offered a loophole for free expression. Books of brothers Arkady and Boris Strugatsky, and Kir Bulichev, among others, are reminiscent of social problems and often include satire on contemporary Soviet society. Ivan Yefremov, on the contrary, arose to fame with his utopian views on future as well as on ancient Greece in his historical novels. 
Strugatskys are also credited for the Soviet's first science fantasy, the Monday Begins on Saturday trilogy. Other notable science fiction writers included Vladimir Savchenko, Georgi Gurevich, Alexander Kazantsev, Georgi Martinov, Yeremy Parnov. Space opera was less developed, since both state censors and serious writers watched it unfavorably. Nevertheless, there were moderately successful attempts to adapt space westerns to Soviet soil. The first was Alexander Kolpakov with Griada. After came Sergei Snegov with Men Like Gods, among others. A specific branch of both science fiction and children's books appeared in mid-Soviet era, the children's science fiction. It was meant to educate children while entertaining them. The star of the genre was Bolichov, who, along with his adult books, created children's space adventure series about Elisa Selizneva, a teenage girl from the future. Others include Nikolai Nosov with his books about dwarf Neznaika, Yevgeny Veltistov, who wrote about robot boy electronic, Vitaly Malentiev, Vladislav Kropivin, Vitaly Gubarev. Mystery was another popular genre. Detectives by brothers Arkady and Georgi Vayner and spy novels by Yulian Semyonov were best-selling, and many of them were adapted into film or TV in the 1970s and 1980s. Village prose is a genre that conveys nostalgic descriptions of rural life. Valentin Rasputin's 1976 novel Proscharya s Matyoroy Farewell to Matyora depicted a village faced with destruction to make room for a hydroelectric plant. Historical fiction in the early Soviet era included a large share of memoirs, fictionalized or not. Valentin Kataev and Lev Castle wrote semi-autobiographic books about children's life in Tsarist Russia. Vladimir Gilyarovsky wrote Moscow and Muscovites, about life in pre-revolutionary Moscow. The late Soviet historical fiction was dominated by World War II novels and short stories by authors such as Boris Vasilyev, Viktor Ostafayev, Boris Polovoy, Vasil Baikow, among many others, based on the author's own war experience. Vasily Yan and Konstantin Badigin are best known for their novels on medieval Rus', and Yuri Tynyanov for writing on Russian Empire. Valentin Pickle wrote about many different epics and countries in an Alexander Dumas-inspired style. In the 1970s there appeared a relatively independent village prose, whose most prominent representatives were Viktor Ostafayev and Valentin Rasputin. Any sort of fiction that dealt with the occult, either horror, adult-oriented fantasy or magic realism, was unwelcome in Soviet Russia. Until the 1980s very few books in these genres were written, and even fewer were published, although earlier books, such as by Gogol, were not banned. Of the rare exceptions, Bulgakov in Master and Margarita not published in author's lifetime and Strugatsky's in Monday begins on Saturday introduced magic and mystical creatures into contemporary Soviet reality to satirize it. Another exception was early Soviet writer Alexander Grin, who wrote romantic tales, both realistic and fantastic. Post-Soviet era The end of the 20th century proved a difficult period for Russian literature, with relatively few distinct voices. Although the censorship was lifted and writers could now freely express their thoughts, the political and economic chaos of the 1990s affected the book market and literature heavily. The book printing industry descended into crisis, the number of printed book copies dropped several times in comparison to Soviet era, and it took about a decade to revive. Among the most discussed authors of this period were Viktor Pelevin, who gained popularity with first short stories and then novels, novelist and playwright Vladimir Sorokin, and the poet Dmitry Prigov. A relatively new trend in Russian literature is that female short story writers Tatyana Tolstaya or Lyudmila Petrushevskaya, and novelists Lyudmila Ulitskaya or Dina Rubina have come into prominence. The tradition of the classic Russian novel continues with such authors as Mikhail Shishkin and Vasily Oksonov. Detective stories and thrillers have proven a very successful genre of new Russian literature. In the 1990s, serial detective novels by Alexandra Marinina, Polina Dashkova, and Darya Dantsova were published in millions of copies. In the next decade, Boris Akunin, who wrote more sophisticated popular fiction, e.g., a series of novels about the 19th century sleuth Erast Fandorin, was eagerly read across the country. Science fiction was always well-selling, albeit second to fantasy, that was relatively new to Russian readers. 
These genres boomed in the late 1990s, with authors like Sergei Lukyanenko, Nick Paramov, Maria Semenova, Vera Kamsha, Alexei Pekov, Anton Vilgotsky and Vadim Panov. A good share of modern Russian science fiction and fantasy is written in Ukraine, especially in Kharkiv, home to H. L. Oldie, Alexander Zorik, Yuri Nikitin and Andrei Valentinov. Many others hail from Kiev, including Marina and Sergei Jichenka and Vladimir Aronev. Significant contribution to Russian horror literature has been done by Ukrainians Andrei Dashkov and Alexander Vargo. Russian poetry of that period produced a number of avant-garde greats. The members of the Lianisovo group of poets, notably Jenrik Sapgur, Igor Kolin and Sevalid Nekrasov, who previously chose to refrain from publication in Soviet periodicals, became very influential, especially in Moscow, and the same goes for another masterful experimental poet, Gennady Aigi. Also popular were poets following some other poetic trends, e.g. Vladimir Aristov and Ivan Zhdanov from Poetry Club and Konstantin Kedrov and Elena Katsuba from Duz, who all used complex metaphors which they called meta-metaphors. In St. Petersburg, members of New Leningrad Poetry School that included not only the famous Joseph Brodsky but also Viktor Krivulin, Sergei Stratonovsky and Elena Schwartz, were prominent first in the Soviet Times Underground, and later in mainstream poetry. Some other poets, e.g. Sergei Gandlevsky and Dmitry Vodenikov, gained popularity by writing in a retro style, which reflected the sliding of newly written Russian poetry into being consciously imitative of the patterns and forms developed as early as in the 19th century. 21st century In the 21st century, a new generation of Russian authors appeared differing greatly from the postmodernist Russian prose of the late 20th century, which lead critics to speak about new realism. Having grown up after the fall of the Soviet Union, the new realists write about everyday life, but without using the mystical and surrealist elements of their predecessors. The new realists are writers who assume there is a place for preaching in journalism, social and political writing and the media, but that direct action is the responsibility of civil society. Leading new realists include Ilya Stogov, Zakhar Prilipin, Alexander Karasiov, Arkady Bobchenko, Vladimir Lorchenkov and Alexander Snijuryov. Topic: <laughs> External influences. Topic: British Romantic poetry Scottish poet Robert Burns became a «people's poet» in Russia. In imperial times the Russian aristocracy were so out of touch with the peasantry that Burns, translated into Russian, became a symbol for the ordinary Russian people. A new translation of Burns, begun in 1924 by Samuel Marshak, proved enormously popular selling over 600,000 copies. Lord Byron was a major influence on almost all Russian poets of the Golden Era, including Pushkin, Vizemsky, Zhukovsky, Batushkov, Baratinsky, Delvig and, especially, Lermontov. <laughs> French literature Writers such as Victor Hugo and Honoré de Balzac were widely influential. Also, Jules Verne inspired several generations of Russian science fiction writers. <inaudible> Abroad Russian literature is not only written by Russians. In the Soviet times such popular writers as Belarusian Vasil Baikow, Kyrgyz Chinggis Aitmatov and Abakaz Fazil Iskander wrote some of their books in Russian. Some renowned contemporary authors writing in Russian have been born and live in Ukraine Andrei Kirkov, H. L. Oldie, Marina and Serhii Jichenka or Baltic states Garros and Evdokimov, Max Fry. Most Ukrainian fantasy and science fiction authors write in Russian, which gives them access to a much broader audience, and usually publish their books via Russian publishers such as Exmo, Ozbuka, and Ast. A number of prominent Russian authors such as novelists Mikhail Shishkin, Rubin Gallego, Julia Kisina, Svetlana Martinchik, and Dina Rubina, poets Alexei Svetkov and Bakit Kenjaev, though born in USSR, live and work in West Europe, North America, or Israel. Topic. Themes in Russian books Suffering, often as a means of redemption, is a recurrent theme in Russian literature. 
Fyodor Dostoevsky in particular is noted for exploring suffering in works such as Notes from Underground and Crime and Punishment. Christianity and Christian symbolism are also important themes, notably in the works of Dostoevsky, Tolstoy and Chekhov. In the 20th century, suffering as a mechanism of evil was explored by authors such as Solzhenitsyn in the Gulag Archipelago. A leading Russian literary critic of the 20th century Viktor Sklavsky, in his book, Zoo, or Letters Not About Love, wrote, "...Russian literature has a bad tradition. Russian literature is devoted to the description of unsuccessful love affairs." <laughs> Russian Nobel laureates in literature Topic. See also. Topic. References. Topic. Bibliography. Terrace, Victor. Handbook of Russian Literature. New Haven, Connecticut: Yale University Press, 1985. ISBN 0300048688. Gorlin, Mikhail. November 1946. The interrelation of painting and literature in Russia. The Slavonic and East European Review, 25, 64. Topic. External links. Encyclopedia of Soviet writers. An outline of Russian literature by Maurice Baring at Project Gutenberg. Maxim Moshkov's E Library of Russian Literature in Russian Contemporary Russian Poets Database in English Contemporary Russian Poets in English Translation A Bilingual Anthology of Russian Verse La Nuova Europa International Cultural Journal about Russia and East of Europe Information and Critique on Russian Literature History of Russian Literature Brief Summary Russian literary resources by the Slavic Reference Service Search Russian books in Russian Philology in Runet A special search through the sites devoted to the old Russian literature Russian literary magazine Reflection of the Absurd Publicna Elektrona Biblioteka e Peskina Herbermann Charles ed 1913 Russian language and literature Catholic Encyclopedia New York Robert Appleton Company